Hi, my name is Emily Winter, and I will be giving my oral presentation for pathogenic microbiology. A girl named Sophia visited her on-campus health center, and she had been very frustrated with different symptoms like nausea and sleepiness. She also had a very stiff neck. And when she looked into any sort of bright light, like the sun or even her lamp or her phone, she had a great deal of discomfort. After examining and questioning her, the doctor immediately referred her to the nearby um, hospital's emergency room, just because he suspected that she may have had one form of meningitis, either bacterial or viral meningitis. So meningitis actually means an inflammation of the meninges of the brain. The meninges of the brain are just a type of protective tissue that surround the brain. When she was at the hospital, doctors obtained samples of Sophia's cerebral spinal fluid. They used a lumbar puncture to obtain the sample. Lumbar punctures are usually really difficult to perform in infants, but Sophia is a fully grown adult, so it was less difficult. Biological cultures were used in order that they may test the cerebral spinal fluid for different types of bacteria, just because they suspected that it was either viral or bacterial meningitis. So if they received some sort of information that it was bacterial meningitis, they could rule out the fact that it was not viral meningitis. Blood cultures can also be performed, but the doctors chose to perform the cerebral spinal fluid cultures first. Individual real-time PCR assay was also used to test for pathogens that can commonly cause meningitis. PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction, and that's a process used in biology that can amplify an organism's DNA. Sophia Henderson, the patient of the study, is a 19-year-old girl. She attends college at South Alabama University. She is majoring in microbiology, and she really wants to be a physician assistant. She's always imagined taking care of other people, but she never thought that she would one day end up being that patient. Sophia is very scared just because she has never felt so sick and helpless before. Her semester finals are coming up and she is nervous that she won't be able to study enough for her microbiology and organic chemistry final exams. She knows she needs really high grades in those classes if she wants to go to PA school. Although she is a straight A student ever since high school, she failed her last two exams in college, which is very unusual for her. She has been very worried about her grades recently and she's felt nauseous every day for the past two weeks. She's been staying up later studying, but she has still made sure to get adequate sleep every night. Nonetheless, she is constantly sleepy, even when she does drink two cups of coffee in the morning. Her neck has been very stiff, and she thought that could maybe be attributed to looking down at her textbook so much. She used to love going to the university pool and tanning in the afternoons, but lately just being outside when it's sunny has brought her so much discomfort. After being so frustrated with all of these difficulties, that was when Sophia decided to go to the on-campus health center. She thought they would most likely refer her to a counselor to maybe deal with her stress. She didn't realize that the doctor would immediately be concerned of something much more serious, the possibility of meningitis. Sophia's family used to be very poor, and Sophia was not fortunate to have immunizations when she was a young girl. She imagined that her symptoms were from stress from school, and she was once diagnosed with appendicitis, and she had her appendix removed. Regarding her family, both of her parents used to be very avid smokers for years before Sophia and Ashley, Sophia's sister, were born. Her parents no longer smoke. And like I stated, their family was once very poor, and sadly, they could not go to the doctor very often, and they did not get the typical routine immunizations for their kids. According to the laboratory results, the doctor diagnosed Sophia with bacterial meningitis. Meningitis is an acute, an acute inflammation of the meninges, like I said. And... 
according to the results of the rapid culture process, they reveal the presence of a bacteria ca called Streptococcus pneumoniae. They also realized that their PCR results showed that the same bacteria, Streptococcus pneumoniae, was also present in Sophia's cerebral spinal fluid. So they had two different tests that both confirmed the same organism present within Sophia's cerebral spinal fluid. The doctors did realize that their, her cerebral spinal fluid was showing an inflammatory response. That just means that the body realizes that there's some sort of invader, so her cerebral spinal fluid was doing what it was supposed to do to try to get rid of that invader, thus an inflammatory response. So her clinical symptoms of things like a stiff neck and sleepiness, lethargy, fatigue, headaches, that kind of thing, combined with these results of the presence of Streptococcus pneumonia bacteria, did confirm a diagnosis of bacterial meningitis in Sophia. So meningitis is an infection of the meninges of the brain, and it can also be an inflammation of the subarachnoid space and the brain vasculature. This inflammation is the, cause, is the result of an infection. Like I stated, meninges are the protective tissues that surround the brain. There are many different types of meningitis, and it's commonly either viral or bacterial meningitis. According to a study in, that was conducted in Iran, they analyzed that Streptococcus pneumonia was the most common form of bacterial organism that caused meningitis. Other types of organisms included things like hemophilus, influenza type B, or coagulase negative staphylococci. These are the most common causes of acute bacterial meningitis. Just among cases in Iran, which is not necessarily a perfect de depiction of the entire world, but it can kind of give us an idea of what are some of the more common forms of bacteria that can cause meningitis. Meningitis is very infectious and it could potentially threaten someone's life if it's not treated people usually die from meningitis, especially bacterial meningitis. Bacterial meningitis is a much more serious form of meningitis, whereas with viral meningitis, typically rest and drinking your fluids will help to get rid of that type of meningitis. Also, antibiotics are used to treat bacterial meningitis, but the antibiotics cannot treat the viral meningitis just because antibiotics cannot kill viruses. Meningitis is considered a central nervous system infection, which just means that it infects things that are in the central nervous system like the brain. And bacter bacterial meningitis can be prevented by va vaccines, which is unfortunate for Sophia because she did not have all of her vaccinations whenever she was a young girl, which is most likely why she was very susceptible to bacterial meningitis. For Sophia's prognosis, we realized that her diagnosis was bacterial meningitis, and this is because that the, bi the bacterial culture showed that there was a bacterial pathogen, Streptococcus pneumoniae. That is the pathogen name. And pathogenesis, which just means the origination of the pathogen, was that the bacteria, Streptococcus pneumoniae, first caused an infection in Sophia's bloodstream. Typically, um, the most common way for a person to develop bacterial meningitis is a primary bloodstream infection and a secondary hematogenous distribution to the central nervous system. These two things can allow a person to develop bacterial meningitis. And if the bacteria continue to enter the person's cerebral spinal fluid, which is what happened to Sophia, meningitis will result. So according to a study done after attaching to the endothelium of the cerebral microvasculature and the choroid plexus, bacteria can enter the cerebral spinal fluid by different mechanisms. Inflammatory mediators can be released into the cerebral spinal fluid 
and that's just in response to the presence of bacterial products. And this results in meningitis, and the blood-brain barrier has more of an increased permeability. That's according to Ku et al. 2015. Like I stated, antibiotics cannot kill viruses, so they are ineffective for treating viral meningitis. But because this is a bacterial meningitis, there should be an antibiotic for Sophia. And the antibiotic that can be used is penicillin, specifically 20 million units of it. And she can take it intravenously every 24 hours for 14 days. And it is believed that because Sophia is being treated very soon after she realized that she had meningitis, she will most likely live. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed.